Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at this MacBook early 2009 and seeing how well it holds up here in 2017. Now I originally got this machine for use back in high school and it still works perfectly to this very day. Interestingly, the design of this MacBook being a pre-unibody design was actually the second to last of its design. In late 2009, the unibody MacBook came out. Between this early 2009 model and the late 2009 model, there was the mid-2009 model as well. So within 2009, there was three different versions of the MacBook. This being the early 2009 model. So, this machine has an Intel Core 2 Duo processor running at 2 GHz and 4 GB of RAM. Now, some sources say that this memory can be upgraded to 8 GB, however, 4 GB is what is officially supported by Apple, and I don't have any need to really upgrade from 4 GB to 8 GB, as this machine I don't use too often very much anymore. Additionally, it has the 13.3 inch widescreen display running with NVIDIA GeForce 9400M graphics, which uses 256 megabytes of video RAM. It also has a 160 gigabyte hard drive in addition to a super drive on the machine as well. So, let's go ahead and take a look around. On the left hand side of the machine, going from left to right, we have the MagSafe power connector for charging the machine, our ethernet port, mini DVI out for external displays, a Firewire 400 port, two USB 2.0 ports, audio in and audio out, in addition to a Kensington lock port. On the right hand side of the machine we will find our super drive. On the front of the machine on the left hand side we will find nothing. However, on the right hand side we will find our sleep-wake indicator light in addition to our IR receiver. At the rear of the machine, on either side, we will have our stereo speakers, in addition to ventilation in the center. On the bottom of the machine, we will find our rechargeable, replaceable battery. All you need to take it out is a quarter to put inside of the locking mechanism here, turn it, and the battery will pop on out. Additionally, on the battery itself, we have a status indicator light here to show how much the battery is currently charged. If you're interested, underneath the sticky notes are just some product keys. With the machine open, we can see our 13.3 inch widescreen display, which has a glossy finish. In addition, at the top of the bezel, we can find our EyeSight camera, which has a 480p resolution. On the left hand side of the camera, we will find our microphone, and on the right hand side, we will find a status light, which turns green when the camera is in use. At the bottom of the display, we will find the MacBook logo. Of course, below the screen, we will find our keyboard, in addition to our trackpad, which does support two-finger scrolling. So, let's go ahead and see how well this thing runs. Okay, so let's turn it on. Currently, this machine is running 10 11 6 El Capitan, which is the highest Mac OS that this machine supports. It takes quite a while to turn on with its 160 gigabyte spinning hard drive, which is original to this machine. Of course, adding an SSD will definitely give this thing a speed boost. You may also notice a checkerboard type pattern on the screen. That's not there in real life, that's only the camera picking that up. Once this thing is up and running though, it's definitely a lot quicker than when it boots. Recently, I have given this thing a brand new install of El Capitan due to the fact that it was starting to slow down and have weird issues. 
Um, I do lend this computer out to other people, so I don't know, maybe one of them uh, did something to it. I have no idea. But a reinstallation of El Capitan seemed to have fixed all the slow issues that this computer was having uh, for quite a while. It would lock up about two minutes after doing anything on the machine, but as I stated, installing a fresh version of El Capitan seemed to have fixed all these problems. So let's go ahead and take a look at about this Mac. So here we can see we are running El Capitan 10.11.6 with our 2 GHz Intel Core 2 Duo, our 4 GB of RAM, and our graphics there as well. Go ahead and take a look at the displays. Of course there's only one, but if you had an external display it would also show up here. And take a look at our storage, our memory, and of course their support and service here as well. So, most people use their machines for the internet. All Safari, Firefox, Chrome, and Opera are up to date and work flawlessly with any website you throw at it from Facebook to YouTube to anything else. I haven't really had anything slow on any of the websites. We'll go ahead and take a look at the default Safari here that comes with El Capitan. And we'll go to one of the lighting sites as an example here. Nothing too extreme, but it definitely gives an example of how well this machine can run a website. I'm scrolling in the wrong direction, that's why we didn't do anything there for a second. This does have natural scrolling, so it might be in the reverse that you are used to, but you can turn that off within settings. So there's just a normal website, and we can also go to YouTube. Which takes a second here to load, but it'll come right up. There's not too much of a problem with running any of the videos. Sometimes they will even run in 720p, which is nice. So, the performance that you see here with Safari is the same with all of Firefox, Chrome, and Opera. Of course, we have an up-to-date version of iTunes. We also have Office 2016 on this machine, uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. They're all on here. All these applications that you see here run just fine on this computer. Of course, older versions of Office will also run on this, including Office 2008 and 2011. But of course, currently the most up-to-date version is 2016. Minecraft is still supported on this machine. So, let's go ahead and we'll open up Word here so you can have a little example of how fast that loads, which isn't really fast at all. But of course, remember, we're using a uh, traditional spinning hard drive inside of this machine versus a SSD. But Office is a suite of, of course, applications that many people like to use, so that's why I always take a look at it. We can see it's thinking quite hard here, I don't know why. Maybe it's trying to authenticate itself. Of course, as you may know, um, after Office 2011 for Macs, you now have to do monthly uh, transactions or yearly whatever to have Office activated. You can't have a license that lasts forever, which is very annoying. But anyway, we can have our blank document here. And you can use it just like Word on a Windows machine as well. All of the ribbons are here just as you're used to. So we'll go ahead and quit out of that. Of course, Excel takes about the same amount of time to load, so there's not too much of a difference there. Again, as I said, all of these applications run just fine on this machine, and I haven't had much of an issue with any of them. So, there's not really much else to show about this computer because there's not really anything else that has a problem on it. As I've shown, things seem to work just fine. There's not really anything I've thrown at it that hasn't. You can do video editings with iMovie on this machine. Of course, it takes a little longer to process, but it does work. I have done it. Uh, I haven't done it in quite a long time, but I have done it on this machine, and it works just fine. 
Do you need more than four gigs of RAM? I haven't found much of a use for having any more than four gigs, because, well, I don't know, it doesn't seem to really take advantage of anything more than four, at least this MacBook itself. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this review of the early 2009 MacBook in 2017. Also, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching. We'll go ahead and let you see it shut down.